Okay, let's go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, loving Jesus, Holy Spirit, what a blessing it is to be here in your presence. Yes, we are covered. We are covered with your grace with your precious blood. We are covered with your love. You have covered us with your wings. For you are our refuge and our protector, our fortress. Where, where else can we go other than you, Lord? Thank you for loving us, no matter what we do, no matter how many times we fall, you just lift us up and you lift us up again and again and again. Thank you, Lord. Because we have you, we are who we are today. Because you gave us your son, we are hungry and thirsty to know him more and more. Because of your son, we are blessed with the beautiful gift of the Holy Spirit who guides us every step of our life, who convict, convicts us of everything that is not right, that is not of your word. Yes, Lord, how mighty are you. We thank you for each and every sister present here today who are here because they are hungry for your word, for the spiritual food that you are serving us. Thank you for their families, for all the blessings that you have blessed them with. We are grateful for everything that you do in our life. Thank you for Sister Melanie, who is going to share your word today. Lord, nothing of her, every word that comes out of her mouth belongs to you. Holy Spirit, you take complete control and make this teaching so simple and easy to understand. And once we leave this session, Help us to go back and get the word to apply, to apply that word into our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are amazing. You are loving. You are compassionate. You are mighty. You deserve all the glory. Thank you for who you make us. Every day, every time we come here. Thank you for all your love. And thank you for this very moment. Help us concentrate on this word today. Let nothing be our distraction. Let nothing come our way when we are focused on you. We thank you, we praise you, we make this prayer in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 Jesus. amen. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, my dear sisters, anyone has anything to share? You know, I used to feel so bad. Oh, who's going to come today? You know, and we, before the, the praise and worship, we say this prayer where this uh, panel is going to be full of people. God's people are going to be here. They're going to come and listen to the word. And uh, before I used to, I used to think, oh, how many people are going to be here today? Who's going to come today? You know, but now <laughs> Holy Spirit tells me, oh, why do you worry? Why do you make it yours? What if no one comes? Don't you know I'm here? So that's why I said, everyone is listening to the word. Holy Spirit is opening their ears and their hearts. And in spirit, they're all present here. Praise God. Praise God. So, Praise God. yes. <laughs> 
Pray Jesus. Okay, anyone has anything to share? Hello? Praise Jesus. Nothing to share? How was the week? Was it good? So, you know, Brother Thomas gave the teaching last week and he's going to come back next week. And he's going to continue with the same topic. So I thought might as well have the recap later and we continue with part two. So that's why we didn't have the recap this time. I don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea. <laughs> Still no one talking to me. It's a Crazy. good idea, sister, um, to have the recap just before the teaching, the next step of the teaching, if that makes sense, of the next part of the teaching. Yes, yes. Thank you, Suzanne. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Oh, uh, and no one wants to talk. No one wants to share anything. The Holy Spirit wants to talk from inside of you. You don't want to let him. Yes, Ravina. Go ahead, Baba. Thank you. Yes, sister, after praying, after applying authorities and all of this, but the still symptoms still exist. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Like after praying, after rebuking, after using authorities, but the pain and the symptoms is always in the body. How do I mean, how to re react and respond to that? Because we are in a body, so it's uh, it uh, sometimes is very discouraging, you know, sister. Right? If there is God, if the God exists or not. Ravina, Ravina, Ravina. Who, who are you? Child of God. Praise God. Praise God. And who is the one who comes with symptoms? Who is the one who comes with lies? Devil. Why don't you open your mouth and tell him what to do and where to go and do it with authority. And yeah, sometimes it will come. You have to meditate. You have to speak God's word. You have to speak. Open your mouth and speak. Because you focus on your symptoms, it, they affect you. What, did, what happened in John 10, 10? The thief comes to steal kill and destroy. But why did God come, Re Baba? To, to give, give life. life. Yeah. So tell him that. My God has come to give me life and abundant life. You have no power over me. I am the child of God. I am the body of Christ. Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. This is what I do when I get pain. I tell him to get out. You have no place. I don't have time for you. Get out. And you know, it, it still hurts. But after some time, I don't know where it's gone. Simple way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. You know, Sister Rabina, when you focus on the situation or you're focusing on the problem, the problem is not going to go away. You move your focus, you shift your focus from the problem to the Lord. And you will see that the problem automatically becomes so small because you have magnified your God. What we Praise do God. is, you know, we magnify the problem and we say, Lord, you, you are so small as compared to our problem. But when we take the approach that saying, come what may, I'm not going to let go of that word. I'm Amen. not going to let go of what, what my God has. And I'm not going to let go till I see that victory in my life. And victory is always yours. See, when a seed is planted, you may not get the harvest the next day. There's a time involved, right? So that time which is involved, you need to operate in patience, fixing your eyes on the word and on Jesus. You know, even if even we have been in the word for, you know, up to a number of years, it doesn't mean that we are immune to problems and trials. There are difficulties in our life and sometimes they don't go away immediately. But the Lord is, is pruning us. The Lord is training us to that, to operate in patience, to operate in love. And as we see that, you know, day after day, we are planting that seed in love, focusing on Jesus, focusing on his word and not on the situation. 
we are going to see the within within you know before we even know the problem is just disappear so my wow. my my thing to you is don't focus on the problem don't you yes. know every time see oh is it gone is, am i you know am, am i still you know don't focus on it at all keep your mind at rest on god's word amen praise god thank you beautifully yes. said melody yes you should yes. said Yes, sister. Thank you so much. But sometimes symptoms is very real, and it talks it talks louder than the word of God. Yeah, because that's he doesn't have anything. He that's what he does comes louder. Because your Lord is very gentle. He's very compassionate. He's very loving. Yeah. You know, I, you know, sister Ravina, it's like this. Yes. When the enemy comes, he is like a roaring lion, and he wants lion. you know he wants to distract you from that word. I or I heard this once in a in a teaching. It said, you know, if a stray dog comes into your room and a stray dog comes into your house, what are you going to say? You are going to shoo that dog away with all mm. your might, isn't it? Yes. So you have the authority. You have the power inside of you. Shoo that dog away! Tell him get out. You have no right. Just said you have no right in my in my house. Yeah. Hello, sister. Like yes. uh, what the word saying to you? I remember one thing. Okay, sister. Can I share that short sure, testimony? Sure. Did I share or I don't know? I forgot. One day I go. I talk. I pray to the Lord. Okay, sister. Did I share this one, sister Maria? I don't know, Re Baba. You say it again. No problem. Okay, okay. One <laughs> day I talk to the Lord. Why symptoms is why this pain and all this pain? This Holy Spirit talk to me. How how shall I react like that? Okay. And after that, uh, once morning I went out for uh, my uh, classes in early morning. Then there comes a dog. Okay. And uh the dog did not attack anyone the dog did not bark one but because of my fear the dog barked at me okay after that i was in a very a very uh, like fiery mode like i just pick up the stone and throw to the dog okay then can you hear me sister yes re baba then the dog ran away so at that time I learned a lesson. If the symptoms speak so much louder, then we have to throw the symptoms with the word of God. Like hmm. after just uh, after just after the prayer, I got this revelation. But I'm just asking: Is this from God or it's my uh, self imagination? Like that? well, symptoms are definitely not from God. Okay. So, when the symptoms come, you have to open your mouth. Why? Because God has told you that he's already blessed you with good health. He's finished everything on the cross. He's put that Satan under his feet. Right? 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, Do not believe in what you see. Believe in what you do not see. Because what you see is temporary. What you don't see is eternal. Right? God says, oh, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. He comes to destroy the word that is inside of you. The word that is waiting to, to uh, the word that you're supposed to water and nourish. He's coming to steal that from you. And the moment you say pain, from glory to God, it goes to glory to that pain. And you know who brings the pain. So God, thank you. You just keep praising and thanking God. Thank you, Lord. My pain is gone. Thank you. I feel so much better. Why don't you turn that? Why don't you say that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. My symptoms are gone. Why don't you say that? Do you want to try that? Yes, yes. I'll try this, sister. But I always use my authority uh, to... Uh... All right. Guess out the symptoms, but uh, after praying on all this uh, rebuking, symptoms come after like different kind of symptoms. Like it's very painful, sister. Yes, sister Rubina, you know, can I just give? Yes, yes, sure. Sorry, sure. sister, can I just give an example of something that really helps me with physical symptoms? So after I um I rebuked the pain or rebuked whatever the symptom is in my body, and then I would. Open the VLC app on my phone. Do you have the? Do you have an iPhone or an Android phone, Sister Ravina? What's your phone, Ravina? What What's phone, sort of do, you phone have, do you Sister have, Sister Ravina? 
Ravina, are you there? I'll just explain how I use the app while she can't unmute. Uh, basically, so I record the scripture. So for example, if it's um, for a food allergy, um, I have recorded Genesis chapter one, verse 29 to 31 on, the v on a voice memo on my phone and then shared it with the VLC app. And then for example, if I found that I was reacting to a certain food, rather than focusing on the symptoms while rec reciting the scripture, I will open the app on my phone and recite the scripture along with the recording of my own voice. And for example, once um, I was reciting along with this, the scripture recording on my phone for about 10 minutes and hadn't realized that the swelling had gone down because I was so focused on Jesus in that word, as opposed to the symptoms in my body, that the symptoms automatically left because I was magnifying Jesus, as Sister Melanie shared, as opposed to magnifying the symptoms. And the VLC app is just very helpful, practically, a very helpful, practical way of focusing on Jesus in the word as opposed to focusing on the symptoms. Because if you're keep trying to keep time with your own voice, speaking God's word back to him, then automatically you're not focused on your symptoms. Yes. So I can copy the link into the chat, as Sister Ravina um uh the the link to download the vlc app for both android and and, and iphone um depending on and you can use whichever one uh is the correct one for your phone and i'm hoping that you can hear this sister yeah ravina have you heard yes yes sister thank you oh, so praise much God. Praise God. The yes I'll, I'll copy in the links but they're really really helpful once you have the correct scripture for your situation um, yes. So, so for example, this one Peter two twenty four, um, or again, as I said, uh, for physical symptoms, uh, for healing, yes. uh, if it's food allergy, Genesis chapter one verse twenty nine to thirty one. But once you're using the correct scripture, um, and you can record it in your own voice, and share it to the VLC app, and it's very easy to use, and it it makes such a difference. And it also means that, for example, if you can't you can be hearing the scriptures going um, with earphones in, for example, if you can't be listening to a teaching to say, for example, if you're you're with people or if you're traveling on the bus or if you're traveling, if you're driving, it's just really, really useful. Praise God. Yes. Did you Praise understand? Yes, sister. Yes. Praise, yes. Praise Jesus. Praise yes. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Praise God. Anything else you have to say? No, sister, it's okay. Okay, Fine. okay. thank you. All right, uh, uh, Alpha, praise Jesus. Go ahead, Baba. Alpha, have you raised your hand? Hello, unmute. Hello? Yes, yes, Sister Maria. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Yes. Go ahead. Hello, Sister Maria. Today, yes. I'm thought that I will be attending this. I'm so happy. Last Sunday also, <laughs> I'm attending. So today also, I'm happy. But what happened in this morning, when I get up, then my head start dizziness. This dizziness okay. come. Then that uh, fear come. So I text you, then you said, no, 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 Alfie, you attend the class. I said, okay, sister. Then when the, that covered more, that song covered by Jesus, I cry in front of Jesus. Yes, I Jesus. see his, I see my Jesus that he was grounding with his thorn. I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying so much. But now that business has gone. Amen. Yes, God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Now I'm I'm get up from the bed. I used to fight. Uh, I am the body of Christ. Dizziness, get out of my place. You have no place wow. in me. Praise yes. Jesus. Now I'm I'm attending this session. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, you see Jesus. how he was attacking you, and you yes. obeyed. When you messaged me, I was fine. Uh, yesterday I was about to attend the session, yes. and. Uh, and then what did I tell you? Come mm. on, join. Yes, yes. So I sounded a bit harsh, didn't I? Yes. But, but I said, come on, join. Yes. And sister. then 
just i told you just surrender just be yes. at the feet of jesus yes, just sir. don't focus on your dizziness focus on the lord yes sister and what happened once you focus on the lord you fall in love with god what happens yes, yes. i'm free yes. i'm totally free amen amen, amen. thank yes. jesus thank you jesus the lord praise god and thank you for sharing it's really nice of you to to raise your hand and share you don't have okay. to put your video on but the holy spirit inside of you wants to speak he wants you to give him all the glory because he deserves the glory yes sister yeah it's it's yes. about him he make he has chosen you for some big purpose alpha yes sister praise god thank praise you jesus me. thank you jesus okay anyone else praise god okay my dear sister melanie gorgeous beautiful child of god let's go praise Over god you. praise god sister maria praise jesus yes. it's such a privilege it's such an honor to be here today among all these beautiful and lovely okay people. just one minute melanie i don't know alpha you had anything else to say no 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 sister no, oh sister. okay 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 thank you sorry okay is it okay anybody else has any testimony any other testimony uh, i want to share yes, yes, uh, sister, yeah. uh, yes praise jesus uh, as sister ravina was saying right that the situation is speaking more louder than the word of god see sister the enemy always uh, as sister maria said uh, the enemy comes to steal kill and steal kill and destroy right so he has come to steal your joy the word of god in you so you need to focus on what the word of god says for that you have to speak yourself what god says to you sister because um some uh, weeks before i was going through some situation and the enemy was keep on saying all all that i don't want to say all that praise god but what uh, what uh, holy spirit told me he just told me that you don't have to worry you start uh, you start praising and thanking god and um, i was that time i was outside and as i reached home i did not go anywhere i just keep uh, i started the praise and worship song and i i was just thanking god and praise god, god. and uh, really the i will say um, the global teachings please share uh, please listen to those teachings and not only uh, every teaching on jc alam i will say to you that listen to that teaching because it will help you uh, um, that uh, that day i did not remember the date but it was uh, sister kiyomi was sharing the word of god and sister Kesh, uh, sister kasi she was also sharing she was saying her testimony she was seeing how the enemy was telling uh, keep on saying all those negative word but what she said no i won't believe it i don't accept it because it is not uh, it is not coming from the word of god it is not from the word of god why i will accept it because it is not from the word of god and whatever with whatever the the word doesn't tell you you don't have to accept it you have to accept only what the word of god says to you the battle praise was god. there the battle was there but praise god i just uh, kept on um, the song the praise and worship song and i was keep on saying what the word of what uh, what jesus has told me i just thanking the lord and praise god after that i keep uh, i was keep focusing on the teaching because uh, the situation was there but uh, i could not um, focus on the word of god because i have to uh, i have to go and i have to give teaching but i uh, but holy spirit told me that um, you just start thank the lord praise the lord praise god who he who he is so praise god and uh, praise god uh, 
praise God, I just keep on uh, confessing after that. I was keep on confessing Luke 4, 18. That is really that, that verse. I really, I love that verse. Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord, Lord Jesus is upon, is upon me. Yes, because he, my God himself has anointed me. He Hallelujah. has filled me with his love and he has set me completely, completely free. And as I was thanking the Lord, praise God, I was at peace. The enemy was keep on saying all those negative words, but I just said, no, I won't accept it. I won't accept it means I don't accept it all that what you are saying. <laughs> I am not a victim. I am a victor. Because Hallelujah. Jesus took all that which was which I had and he he did all that, right? He finished on the cross. Now, why I will accept all that which already Jesus took? So Amen. I won't accept I won't accept it. All that and that enemy was saying to me. And praise God, really the word of God, when you listen what he is saying to you, really the peace comes, the comfort comes, the strength comes, the peace comes, the strength comes, the joy comes only from the word of God. So you need to train yourself what the word of God says to you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, and thank you, sister. Praise thank you, God. Jesus. Yes, sister, thank I just you. wanted to share this. Yeah, very good, Shanta. Thank you, Jesus, Baba. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Okay, Baba Melanie, over to you. Uh, sister, you Praise are... God. Yeah, I was muted. As Sister Shanta was sharing, I was reminded of this one scripture, Isaiah 26, verse 3, which says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. I don't know, Enoch, if you can share this scripture. Because this is such a wonderful scripture for each one of us. When we keep our mind stayed on God, focused on God and his word, we are at peace. No matter what, maybe the symptoms are there. Maybe the problem has not disappeared. But when we are focused on God and his word, we are focused on the Lord. Good, KJ. Mind is at peace. I think it's oh, yes, AMPC, so that's fine. You will guard him and keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. What is trust? Anybody, what is trust? No matter, what goes, yeah, yeah, no matter what goes on in your life, yeah. but you're focused on God. You're okay. at, at peace. You're at peace. Okay. So trust is not the same as faith. Okay, faith is when you're holding on to a promise, you're not looking at the seen, but you're looking at the unseen. And you're holding on to that scripture because you know and you know that victory is going to be yours. Now, trust, somebody said there, you're completely dependent on God. What does that mean? That means whether your prayer is going, are going to be answered or not, whether your God is going to come through or not, your mind is stayed on the Lord. Your relationship with the Lord is not affected. It remains the same. It remains steadfast. You know, an uh, example, a very good example is, I don't know if you have heard this story of the, of the three men, Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego in the Old Testament. Yes. When they were put in that, in that fiery furnace, because they refused to bow down to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, you know? they refused to bow down to him. And when they were put in that furnace, the furnace was made so hot that it says that even the people who went to put them in the furnace, they got burned. But you know what happened? There was a fourth man, a fourth person who showed up in that furnace. 
And King Nebuchadnezzar himself was so amazed when he saw this fourth person. He said, who is this fourth person in the fire? And it is believed that that person was none other than the son of God himself who showed mm -hmm. up in that fire. Because these three men, they said, King Nebuchadnezzar, whether, you know, whether we, our God is going to come now and save us or not, we do not care. But we are not going to bow down to that idol. We are not going to bow down to what you are, do what you are telling us. We don't care about the consequences. And that is trust. Trust is a much higher level of faith. It is, it is another beautiful example in the New Testament is Mother Mary. Mother Mary was a beautiful example of trust. You know, right through her life, she went through so much of problems, so much of, you know, she, she could see that her son was, was going through all this struggle. Imagine at the right, at the last moment, she's seeing her son brutally bruised, brutally stricken and completely, you know, completely Gone, and he's just hanging on that cross, a lifeless body. This put it out. And can you imagine? She's still holding on to that promise that was sent to the angel that her son would be the savior of this world. Amen. How Amen. did she do that? It's just trust. Yes. It's trust. It looked like everything was hopeless. Everything was over. I mean, yes. what more was there to be? And, and this is the same son who the prophecy was given. And yet she stood there bravely at that cross of hell. That is trust. So trust is a much higher level than faith. It's not just faith. It is faith coupled with our relationship with the Lord. Our relationship with the Lord doesn't, doesn't get affected. Lord, you are always with me. Lord, I'm not going to be moved by what is, it's like that tree standing by the rock, by the rivers, by, you know, with, with a tree standing. The tree doesn't uproot itself and go and plant itself in another place when there's a problem. No. Whether there is a storm, whether there is a, whether there is, you know, any kind of problem, the tree remains firmly rooted in the ground. Amen. The same way yes, we need to be firmly rooted in the Lord and his word. Come what may in our life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Right? In that approach, we are going to see the glory of the Lord. The Lord himself is going to show up in our fiery furnace. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So this is not the Amen. topic I wanted to share on today, but, you know, the Holy Spirit just just um, this God. say this and move me to this uh, this portion about trust so that I can encourage each one of you to this be steadfast God. and to maintain your relationship with the Lord. Come with me. You know? And as you begin to immerse yourself in God and his word, just immerse yourself. You know, many times this has found, become a beautiful therapy for me. Whenever I'm going through a problem, a situation, maybe with my children or maybe in the health or whatever, I just sit with the word of God. Or I pray in tongues. And before I know, as I'm just sitting with the Bible, I'm immersed in studying about him and knowing him. I just see my problem is taken care of and it just vanishes sometimes. I'm not even aware of when it, when it is vanished. It's a beautiful therapy that you, know, that you can do this. Praise God. Whenever you are in a Praise crisis, God. a difficulty, a situation. Yes, Sister Suzanne? You want oh, no, to say, I was just saying, praise God. Awesome. Yeah, praise God, praise God. So the Lord has given us such beautiful things. Sister Sudan shared about this BLC where you can keep playing the scripture over and over again till it becomes flesh inside of you. Praying in tongues and is another way to, you know, encourage our spirits, encourage our, ourselves. And, you know, we come out of that. It's like putting your, you're putting your mobile or your cell phone for charging. The minute we plug in into that, uh, tap in into that power from the Holy Spirit, from that grace, from, from the whole, from the Holy Spirit. We get our our spirit gets charged, and as we get charged up, we just you know we feel so light, and our problem doesn't really bother us anymore. Praise God. And the enemy is such a shameless guy, and then he sees that oh no, this child I cannot you know I cannot mess up with this child anymore because she's not he or she is not bothered about it. He just quietly scoots and runs away. That's what happens with a dog, you know. She's so <laughs> nicely shared. You know, when I, I, I take my walks every evening and then, you know, the Holy Spirit always reminds me about this. You know, when you're walking and you see a dog and you show that you are afraid, the dog is going to come after you. The dog is going to come and pounce on you because he knows that, you know, you are afraid of that dog. But if you just walk boldly and just move on, sometimes just pray in tongues and just move on, even though these stray dogs are around, the dog is not going to touch you. Praise God. And that's how it works in the kingdom. Amen. If you know who you are in Christ Jesus, who is inside of you, 
and you don't give in to fear, the enemy has to just scoot off. I, I literally see that in front of my eyes, the stray dogs coming towards me and I just start, <laughs> start praying. I say, ah, la, 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 ba, 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 ba. God, your Lord, you are with me without showing any bit of fear and those dogs just go away. And people tell me, you know, in my society, how come you walk on the road like that? You don't get, you don't get a stick with you. You don't get scared of the stray dogs. I said, no, I'm not scared because the Holy Spirit is with me. Praise God. Amen. 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 So remember the stray dog, whenever he comes like a... <laughs> So, uh, praise God. So, <laughs> yeah, Mel, Mel is so beautiful. She is already on fire and her muscles are already built. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise, Thank praise the Holy Spirit. Praise you. you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, gives us such beautiful practical oh, yes. examples that we can yes. use, you know, in our daily lives. And you know, he's, he's such a wonderful teacher. You know, the best teacher, in fact, you know, when we, when we say your teacher, he's, he's, there's nobody who can teach us more beautiful than the Holy Spirit. He talks to us through examples that we see in our everyday life, through nature, through our work in the kitchen. You know, the Holy Spirit, you just be open to him. As you pray in tongues, you will observe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you so beautifully and so wonderfully. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, we were we were studying, my dear. Uh, we were hearing this beautiful song, my dear sisters, on the on grace, right? Grace, yes. Grace, beautiful grace. I've been covered by grace. Mm. Now I want to ask each one of you, what is grace, and have you experienced grace in your life? Let's hear it from some who have not shared today, and you know, if you all are free yes. to unmute so that we can make this like a you know interactive session. So it's not only I'm talking, but all of us are you know sharing. So what is grace? Come on, Alpha, Ravina, come on, go ahead, Baba. Doesn't there's no wrong and right. It just yes, answer. yes. Don't feel or uh, don't feel bad if you're not giving the perfect answer. It doesn't have to be perfect. We are all learning here. So what do you understand by grace? You can put in your own words. What do you understand by grace? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Grace is unconditional love. Grace is God's unconditional love. Okay. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Any other, any other definition? Thank you, Sister Ravina. The word grace is describes not only God's unmerited, somebody put there, unmerited favor of God. Unmerited favor of God. Yes, Sister Ravina said, it's because of his unconditional love that even though we don't deserve it, even though we don't merit it, grace has been given to us. Grace has been given to us. It is the unmerited favor that has been given to each one of us. Why? Because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The day we accepted Jesus as our Lord God and Savior, through the finished works of Christ, through what Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary, we receive the unmerited favor of God. We come under grace. That's why that word says we have been covered by grace. His precious blood has cleansed us of all our sinfulness. No matter what we have done in the past, no matter you know where we have gone, no matter where we have been, no matter what our past is, God doesn't look at our past to give us a future. We have been covered by his grace. And that's grace. Grace is not only unmerited favor, but it is God's ability, God's anointing, his power at work in our lives, even though we do not deserve it. Let me explain, explain this to you. What does it mean by God's unmerited favor, God's ability to use his power in your life? 
you know, God is all powerful. We all know God is an omnipotent God. He's a is an Amen. all powerful God. Amen. But He has allowed this power to be seen in our life through the grace that He has provided to you and to me. God cannot, you know, cannot work independently of you and you and me. He is working through you and through me. His Amen. power is at work through each one of us, even though we don't deserve it. We Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Because of our sins, because of our sin, we deserve to die. But praise God, Jesus came, took all our sin upon himself, became sin for you and for me, took our shame, took our rejection, took our poverty, everything that was meant for us. He took it upon himself on the cross. And that is grace. We don't deserve any of it. But because of his love for us, the father chose to sacrifice his only son, Jesus, who became a substitute for us. Jesus, who died in your and my place so that we could enjoy this beautiful life. And that is grace. Amen. So Amen. everything that is provided by God, it's like a buffet that has been laid. There is healing, there is prosperity, there is abundance, good relationships, gift of tongues. Everything is provided under grace. Hallelujah. Now imagine, there is that beautiful buffet that has been laid out for us. Are we going to just sit in one place and say, Lord, I'm hungry. I want to eat. Lord, I'm thirsty. Lord, give me, give me, give me. What are we going to do? We are going to go take our plate. And serve ourselves from that buffet, from that big, you know, uh, banquet that is prepared. And what is it that allows us to move into action? It is our faith. So grace cannot work in your life independently of faith. You know, some people say very loosely, and I used to use this word myself before. Oh, by the grace of God, everything is fine. Okay, grace of God is there. What are you doing? What is your response to grace? Your response to grace is your faith. It is your faith that moves you into action and take what is rightfully yours, what grace has provided. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank so you, the, the word of God, I want to go to Titus chapter 2, verse 11. The word of God says that grace has appeared to all people, to all men. All men. Grace has appeared to all men, irrespective. Or whether, you know, they are, they are uh, born again, they are un unbelievers, they are uh, believers. Grace has been appeared to all men. But to appropriate, to receive that grace, we have to respond in faith. Our faith allows us to receive what grace has provided. Praise Thank God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Enoch, Baba. Yeah, are we putting up that scripture? Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. Thank Jesus. you, Enoch. Alpha, you want to read, Baba? Yes, sister. Okay, it's on the screen for you. Yes. Um, for the grace of God that bringing salvation had appeared to all men. Praise God. So the grace has appeared to all men, but it is our faith that allows us to receive what is provided by grace. And that is why the word of God says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 that we have been saved by grace through faith. So it is both grace and faith working together that gets the job done. You know, that you, they cannot work independently of one another. You cannot say that grace is there so that, you know, everything is provided Everything happens as it is by the grace of God. And I do not take any responsibility over my over it. No, no, no. Grace requires your faith to work. So mm -hmm. when at this in the at the same time, you cannot say, I have faith. I have faith without believing in that grace which God has provided. Your faith enables you to appropriate, to receive what grace has already provided. Amen. Let's just God put that in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. So we know how grace and faith work together. Praise God. Ephesians, Baba. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8.
Go, Alpha. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Praise God. So what is the gift of God? Faith is the gift of God. The day we accepted Jesus as our Lord, God, and Savior, the faith of God was planted inside our spirit. So faith is given to every born again believer. You cannot say, I have no faith. Every one of us has got faith inside our spirit. But the amount we receive is to the extent to which we exercise our faith. You know, if you don't respond in faith, we will be a passive Christian. We will just be sitting there believing everything happens by the grace of God. If God wants, it will happen. If God doesn't want, it will also not happen. So we do not show any responsibility. But when we are truly believers, when we are truly believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, our faith will help us to respond, to put into action that faith, to believe that word and to receive by faith all that God Amen. has given. Amen. 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 So we God. need our faith to respond to that grace. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now, Thank what you. I wanted to um, actually talk to you about today is another aspect of this whole thing about faith and grace, because I'm sure many of you who are on this platform have heard about grace and faith in the past. But there is something that the Lord has been teaching me personally, and I just want to share this with you. Okay, praise God. Now, we all know that there are two kingdoms, right? There is a spiritual kingdom, and there is a physical earthly kingdom where we all live. We all live on this earthly kingdom, on this, earthly, on this earth. Okay? But we are not citizens of this world. We are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of the heavenly kingdom. The day we accepted Jesus, we became citizens on, of the heavenly kingdom. Now, the spiritual laws that govern the physical kingdom and the spiritual kingdom, that is the heavenly kingdom, are far different. You know that on this world, when we live in this world, there are spiritual laws that operate, uh, laws that operate, right? Right? Laws of yes. this, this world. Say you, you are given a, a red signal. You cannot go and break the red signal. You will fall, you will fall into trouble. Similarly, there is a law of gravity. Anything that you hold doesn't go up, it comes down. There is a law. So there are laws that govern this physical kingdom, this place where we stay, the earth. In the same way, there are laws which govern the spiritual kingdom. And it is so important that we need to abide, we need to adhere to the laws of the spiritual kingdom in order to experience that abundant life that God has given to each one of us. We cannot because we are citizens of heaven. Remember, we live in this earth, but we do not belong to this earth. Our spirits are born again. Our spirits have got Jesus on the inside of us. So we actually belong to the heavenly kingdom where we are seated in heavenly places. Remember Ephesians chapter 1 verse number four, 3, I think it's number 3. It says we are mm -hmm. seated in heavenly places. Can we put that Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, you know? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So Christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That is what is grace. Every blessing is ours for the taking. And that is all provided in the spiritual world. We cannot see it, but it exists even before we say, we, even before we are speaking our words of faith that is already existing. Our faith is allowing us to bring into existence on the physical, whatever is already provided in the spiritual world. Amen. So there are, there are spiritual laws that govern the spiritual world. And many times what happens is we are confessing the scriptures. We are, you know, uh, operating. We say we are operating in faith. We know what faith is. But at the same time, we are not abiding by the laws of the spiritual kingdom. And because we do not abide, we do not follow those laws of the spiritual kingdom we are not able to experience the abundant life that Jesus has prepared for us as believers of Jesus Christ. 
And mm -hmm. what are these laws? Today we are going to study about one law, one law that is that is so very important. And it is a spiritual law that governs God's kingdom. And that is humility. Humility. You know, grace cannot work outside of humility. You will be surprised. Because we are confessing the scripture. We are, you know, doing everything. But we say, Lord, why it is not working? It is because we are not being humble. We are not humbling ourselves to that word. That means we are not allowing that we to be subject to that word. We are not allowing that word to become the ultimate of our lives. Mm. Do you understand? I, I'll show you a scripture which, which explains this. Okay, Let's go to James chapter 4, verse number 6 and 7. James chapter 4, verse number 6 and 7. Yeah, can we read that, sister? But he gave it more grace, wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but gave it grace unto the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Praise God, praise God. Let's look at the first verse, verse number six. It says, he gives more grace, right. but he gives more grace. Now, you know, when I, when I heard, when I first read the scripture, I was asking the Holy Spirit, why is it more grace? Isn't that grace is given to everyone? Grace, the same amount of grace is given to everyone. Why does it say he gives more grace? Then it says, he says, wherefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. So that's the second verse which has the answer. See, the amount, grace is there. But the amount to which we are receiving that grace, we are able to appropriate from that grace. It depends on how much I am humbling myself. Grace. That's why it says, the very fact it says that it gives more grace, that means there is a, there is a, a, a extent to which grace can be received. It can be either more grace or it can be less grace. There's an extent. So the extent to which you receive grace is dependent on the condition of your heart, the humility of your heart. That's why it says God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble. So what is humility? And, and how do we say, you know, am I really humble? I want to receive more grace. Now, am I really humble? You know what is humility? Humility in its simplest sense is being submissive, being obedient to God's word. When we humble ourselves and submit to God's word, following his leading instead of the wisdom of the world, then we receive that more grace we need to resist the devil. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So Thank in you, order Jesus. to resist the devil, I need to submit myself to God. James 4, 7 says, you submit yourself to God. That means you humble yourself to God's word. You make his word the ultimate in your life. Come what may, I'm not going to speak. Maybe somebody will come and say, Are what that word of God is not working. How much you're confessing scriptures, nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. Then one yeah. more time, one more day, suddenly one symptom will pop up and say, the devil is going to show his ugly head and say, you know, see, this is not working. Your scripture is not working. So are we submitting? Are we being humble to that word and saying, no, Lord, I am humble. I am perfectly obedient to that word. I am going to hold on to that word. Come what me. Humility is being humble to God's word. You know, this is a very, very different way from the way the world sees humility. That's why I said it is a law of the kingdom. It's not a law of this world. You know, before I came to the word of God, I always thought a humble person means a person who's quiet, who's shy, who's sitting in the corner, who's not boastful, who's not brash. And, you know, I taught myself to be a very humble person. I always thought, you know, because I'm quiet, I don't, I'm not interfering. So I thought I'm a humble person. And that's what the enemy had deceived me to think I'm humble. Praise God. Because I was not humble to the word. I was humble to the world. The world would see me as a humble person because Melanie is sitting in a corner. She's not interfering. She's shy. She doesn't want to interact. But you know, shyness is not humility. Shyness is pride. 
Pride. Yes. Yeah. You know why shyness is pride, Sister Maria? Yes. Why? Why shyness pride? Because it's all about me. Amen. That's very true. Absolutely. Yes. It's all yes. about you because it's yes. pointing to self. Anything Amen. that points to self is pride. And shyness is saying, no, I don't want to make a fool of myself. I do not want to open my mouth. I want to. It's always about I. I is glorified. And when the I is glorified, that's a person who is, who is proud. You know, it's like what happened to Lucifer. What happened to Lucifer? Lucifer was the, you know, uh, an angel. The word of God says in the book of Isaiah that Lucifer was one of God's best angels. He was a fantastic musician. He would make beautiful music for the Lord. But what happened to him? He exalted himself. I, let, let's go to that. I think it is in Isaiah uh, 46. Let me just check. I think it's somewhere in Isaiah. Mm. Uh, trying to find that out. Isaiah 46. Oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to see my notes on that. Isaiah 14. Sorry, sorry, no, sorry. Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 14. Isaiah 14, you know. Isaiah 14. Yeah, verse 12 to 14. Yeah, can we read that? How... Art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Next. Oh, read, read on. Yeah. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sight of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Praise mm. God. Thank you, Jesus. So it's so nicely put. All the eyes have been marked. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Yes, so it's God. all about I. See, Lucifer I. didn't hate God, but he wanted to be like God. He wanted to exalt himself. That is, says, I will exalt. I will sit upon the mountain. I will ascend. It was yes. all about him. He wanted Aye. to be exalted like the God most high. Satan mm -hmm. wanted all the glory and the worship that was reserved for God to be on him. And that mm -hmm. is why he was kicked out. That is pride. He got mm -hmm. kicked out of heaven because of pride. So pride Aye. was the first sin. In fact, even before Adam and Eve sinned, uh, the sin of pride was from Lucifer. You know, many people think that Adam and Eve had the sin of disobedience. Yes, it was the sin of disobedience, but it was the origin, the root of that sin of disobedience was pride. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Jesus. You, Jesus. Adam and Eve, they fell into the same trap of, uh, of, uh, of Lucifer because they wanted to be like God. When Satan tempted and told them, you know, you can be like God. They wanted the wisdom that comes from God, from, you know, the godly wisdom. You would, he said you would become like God. And that was pride. If they had humbled themselves and they had exalted God's wisdom above their own wisdom, they wouldn't have sinned. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God. So all sin is rooted in pride. And therefore, what we are saying here is that God gives more grace to the humble. It is so important that we are humble, that we are obedient to the word of God so that we can receive from the grace of God. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Thank, Praise you, Jesus. God. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's move back to that uh, scripture. James chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. God praise Jesus. God. Okay, so there it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
So this is what we have been studying earlier on. When we resist the devil, that means we fight actively against the devil. He is going to flee from us. Now, resisting the devil is also, that's why these verses are put together. It's overcoming the pride that is in, inside of us and walking in humility. Because pride is, you know, since it was the from the original sin, pride was ingrained in our spirit before we, we were born again, right? And that kind of whatever the old traits, the old habits, they were somehow still in our soul. Our soul is still corrupted with many of the habits of or on our or on our traits of the of our old self. Though our spirit became brand new. I don't know if you all have got this teaching on spirit, soul, and body. Man is a tripart being, right? Spirit, mm. soul, and body. The day we accepted Jesus, our spirit became brand new. Our spirit became whitewashed. We are completely cleansed in our spirit. But that doesn't mean our soul, in our soul, in our thinking, in our feelings, we are not going to sin. There is still a certain amount of, you know, the old self in our soul. And that includes pride. That includes our old, older, you know, old way of thinking. Because many a times it can only also subconsciously come to you. You know, you, you're pointing to you. Whatever you do, it, I mean, we are, we are all in that journey. We are all in that process of renewing our mind every day with the word of God. So pride can seep in. That is why the word says we have to resist the pride. We have to resist the devil. We have to resist that pride that is inside of us. And he will flee from us. We have to actively fight against it, overcoming the pride inside of us. See, God doesn't hate the sinner. God hates the sin. And God is resisting. God, God, God wants you and me to operate in humility. God wants you and me to stop operating in pride. He continues to love us. God's unconditional love is there for everybody. He's not going to stop loving us. He is going to continue to love us. But we ourselves will be stopping that flow of grace when we are operating in pride. Are you getting me, my dear brothers and sisters? Yes, yes, amen. Yes, Praise God. God. Thank you, Jesus. If you have any questions, you can stop me at any point. You can make it an interactive. Something you want to ask or something you want to clarify, you can do that. Sister Maria, anything? Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 we are okay, Melanie. Praise You're God. okay with me so far? Yes, yes, beautiful. You don't want to interrupt. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 So, unfortunately, many Christians still today operate in the world system of pride and independence. You know, right from right from the you know from the magazine covers, and you see politicians, you see people in all all walks of life. You know, they, they want to boast about, they want to say, I am a self-made man. I am a self-made person. I want to do it my way. It's all about me. Where, wherever you go, you know, there's even a song which says, I think it was by Frank Sinatra. It says, I did it my way. I did it my way. I used to sing my this way. song before. <laughs> Vincent was one of Vincent's favorite songs. I did it my way. Because the world is saying that if I don't promote myself, if I don't make myself known, then who will? I need to be number one. I need to, you know, showcase myself. And that's what all, all our, you know, our models and our actors and actresses, they are, that's what they do. It's all about showtime. And that's Praise so God. different from the world, from the, from the world, from the way the spiritual kingdom works. In the spiritual kingdom, there's no songs like, I did it my way. I did it his way. Everything is his. It's yes. less of me. I need to crucify the self in me and <laughs> exalt him. Even Praise when God. I'm giving my testimony, even in my service, whatever I'm doing, it's not about me. It's about him. And when I humble myself to that word, I humble myself to that God, to that Jesus, I'm going to see the glory of God flow in my life. Amen. amen but the word amen. of God, Jesus said himself in, in, in the book of Luke. Is it uh, Luke, uh, Luke 2.42? Jesus said, those who are humble will be exalted. And those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Can Thank we go you. there, Enoch? Is Enoch there? 
Yes, he'll be there. Baba, oh, there you go. Melanie, it's like God saying to you, I did it my way, Melanie. <laughs> well, you, however, you so run far away from me. <laughs> obedient to him, he is going to do it. He's going yeah, to do man. everything for you. In fact, he's already done everything. I would say he has already done yes, everything. Yes, yes. But when you are simply obedient to his word, his grace is going to flow and flow and flow and flow in your life. That's Praise what it means. More grace. More grace. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank God. you, Jesus. So the word of God says that those who are exalted will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Bubble Luke God. too. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 2. Is it Melanie? 242. Uh, Luke isn't it? 2. It is, I think it's in Luke 2. I don't know. I'm not getting the scriptures here on my screen. 42. See 42. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll come to that later. We'll get it somewhere. Let's, we'll come to that later. You know, can you just put James chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 again, please? Sorry about it. Praise That's God. okay. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Then we move back there too. So James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will free, free from you. Now, how do we resist the devil? We actively fight against that pride. Jesus himself told us that in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, that he is meek and humble in heart. So pride is the opposite of humble. And God and a proud person cannot walk together. You know, the book mm. of God in Amos, Amos chapter 3, verse 3, it says, how can they two walk together except they be agreed. What happens is when we choose to operate in pride and walk in pride, we are walking in opposition to God. You know, it's like two people walking on the path, but one is walking in one direction and the other person is walking in the opposite direction. God is not personally against us, but he cannot walk with us when we are operating in pride. Otherwise, both of us will go the wrong way. Yes. Can you put that in most, in most chapter 3, verse 3. You know, can you put that, please? Amos chapter 3, verse 3. So it says, How can two walk together except they be agreed? Can you repeat they be agreed? So we are walking in pride, and God is telling us, No, you need to walk in humility. But because we are going our own way, we are refusing to submit to the word. Now, God wants to walk with us, but we are repelling from that word and we are moving in the opposite direction. Can you keep... Yes, brother. Yes. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Yeah. Can you read that, sister? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Amen, 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 amen. So except two people agree with one another, can they walk together? If you're walking with somebody, you're walking with somebody, you're friends with somebody, both of you all are walking on the same path, you need to be in agreement with one another. That is why it's so important, even in a marriage, the husband and wife need to be agreement. So one maybe has to, you know, bow down or one maybe has to, die to themselves so that they can agree with the other person because it will not always be that both are in agreement, right? Sometimes mm. husband will say one thing and wife will say another thing. They may not be in agreement, but one of them has to die to themselves so that they can agree with one another, correct? Thank in the God. same way, in this case, you need to die to your pride so that you can agree with God and walk with him. Hey, Jesus. So beautiful. Unless you die to yourself. So pride, dying to the pride inside of you and walking in humility, walking in total obedience to God's word will allow you to walk with God and see the glory of God in your life. 
Amen. Amen. And Amen. and God and God, you know, He wants to work through you. You know, as I said, grace is God's ability to use His power on our behalf, even though we do not want to, or even though we do not deserve it. God wants to work through you, but your pride sometimes frustrates God. Pride, you know, frustrates grace. Grace is saying, "Yes, I want to do it through you. I have given you everything." But pride is frustrating that grace from operating in your life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It's so important for us to bow down, to crucify ourselves. The mm -hmm. I in us, the I in us needs to be crucified, dying to ourselves in order that we may do his will. We may do it his way and not our way. Hallelujah. 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 So Hallelujah. he Hallelujah. may be saying so many scriptures, but are we dying to ourselves in our everyday life? Am, am I dying to, my, to myself to be a blessing? You know, one area where this is so very prominent is in the area of forgiveness. The area of forgiveness. And I've seen this in countless cases when I'm counseling. The biggest block to receiving healing is unforgiveness. Is unforgiveness. God wants to shower his blessings. Grace has provided healing. It's the rain falling. The rain is coming towards you. But unforgiveness is like that umbrella that you're holding, which is preventing the rain from coming and blessing you. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Yes. Amen. And that is why is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is because of pride. That's why I said pride is the original sin. You're saying, I won't forgive, whatever. You know, there was a counseling case that we had about two, three years ago in, in, in Pune. And there was this couple who were having a lot of problems in their life. You know, they were, uh, and uh, their daughter, they, she was the one who intervened and she said, you know, I, I want you to meet my parents because they have been having so many issues in their life. And it so happened that this wife, you know, she had been terribly abused and persecuted by her husband all through her life. And she was carrying so much of hurt, so much of, you know, unforgiveness, resentment in her heart. And we spoke to each one of them, husband and wife separately. And when we spoke to the husband, we found out that he also had gone through a lot because of his upbringing, because of, that had reflected in his behavior towards his wife. And when he was taken through, you know, forgiveness, he said, yes, I'm willing to forgive. And whoever, you know, has hurt me in the past, I'm willing to let go and everything. This wife, you know, she was having a lot of pain overall in all her body, a lot, lot of joint pain, arthritis and what have you. But when it came to her, you know, this was the first time I encountered this. And she said, you know, even on my dead body, even if I die, I'm never going to forgive this man. I'm not going to forgive this man. And it was the saddest moment at that time because whatever way she would try to convince her that she needed to forgive, she said, no, I'm not letting, letting go. It was that pride inside of her. Maybe she had been hurt terribly. She had suffered, suffered miserably at the hand of this man. But we told her that day, if she was willing to forgive, she would experience the glory of God. And she didn't do that. So, you know, sometimes we are carrying so much of hurt, so much of baggage, that that baggage itself is so much that we are not mm -hmm. able to receive that grace. God wants to give us more grace. He gives more grace to the humble. But the pride in us is stopping us from receiving that. Praise God. And praise God, praise God. So in our area of unforgiveness or forgiveness, we need to let go, whatever it may be. You know, look at Jesus. Jesus never looked at our sin. He never looks at us. Even today, he's not looking at us at our sin. He's looking at us in our spirit. He's looking at us through the condition of our heart. He's not saying you're a sinner. He didn't look at that woman who committed adultery with sin. No, he did not see her. He saw her heart. Her heart that wanted, you know, to come to the Lord. When Jesus saw uh, Nathaniel under the fig tree, he said, I knew you. Before I saw you under the fig tree, I knew you. He was looking at the condition, the potential inside Nathaniel's heart. He was, saying, he was saying, yes, this person I can use as my apostle. Nathaniel was Bartholomew who became an apostle of Jesus. God looks at our heart. He's not looking at the sin. Why do we, you and me, need to look 
at what somebody has done to us. Let go. We are not going to take that anywhere with us. Let's Thank experience. God. Let's experience the glory, the more and more grace that God wants to give us that we need to receive from operating in humility and overcoming the pride. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. So this is one area that there, there are several other areas that, you know, we can see that sometimes we are unable to experience that more and more of that grace. You know, any another area is in the area of our finances. You know, many people are, are you know, under debt, under terrible financial problems. And they do not see a financial breakthrough. And sometimes they are confessing the scriptures, but they are not ab abiding by the laws of the spiritual kingdom. You know what this, the law, one of the laws of the spiritual kingdom says? Give and it shall be given unto you. Press Amen. down, shaken together, running over. Men shall give unto your bosom. Luke 6, uh, um, Luke 6 38. It says that. Eight. Right? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But we are not, we do not want to give. The Lord is not telling us to give only in the matter of our fine and our resources. We can sow our time. We can sow our talent. There are so many ways we can sow in the kingdom of God. And giving is one of the spiritual laws that multiplies the blessings in our life. Giving, you know, even the small amount. So it's very easy to give from our abundance. But when things are difficult, are we ready to part with that? Are we ready to, you know, make something less for ourselves so that we can go and be a blessing in somebody else's life? That's a spiritual law. Now, what will prevent us from giving? Again, it's pride. I want more for myself. I need to have that new dress for Christmas. I need to have that, you know, uh, uh, a new mobile. You know, that's, that's, that's one of the one of one of the diseases that is plaguing our young generation you know i was just talking to my daughter some some days back and she was telling me mom you know i don't know that my colleagues they they do not bat an eyelid about spending whatever they get they want to spend that's and forget spend what they get sometimes even take on credit what they want to get what they don't have yet with them it's a disease mm -hmm. they want everything now it is instant gratification so what they do, they, they just completely override the wisdom of God. And they say, no, let it be my way. Instead of saving up, they want you know to, you, to, to have yes, everything God. now. And they end up spending more than they are actually earning on credit. And the banks are all so, so you know, they, they keep chasing you. They all want you to, the minute they see you have a particular uh, salary, they will, they will easily offer you a credit card. And you keep getting flooded with SMSs. Saying that, you know, this is this offer and that offer. That's how the world is going to tempt you. The devil lures you with the sin of lust and the sin of pride. He's a crafty guy. And we need to be very, very careful. Praise God. Thank you, God, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So that's another area where we can operate in pride. So we are praying for, for you know, a, a breakthrough in our finances. But at the same time, we are not able to, you know, to submit ourselves, humble ourselves to that word of God. The word of God says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, it says, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Can we read that? Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Praise God. Thank, Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. What Thank a Jesus. great truth, my dear sisters and brothers. He said, be content, be satisfied. Be content with such, with such things as you have. Be content. Why do we need more? Why do we need to show? Most of the people today, they want to show themselves, you know, they want to show that they have a big house, they have a fat balance, they have a beautiful car. <laughs> Be content with what you have. For God has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Submitting ourselves, humbling ourselves to this word will allow us to receive what more and more from the grace of you know, James chapter 4, verse number 3 says, can we go there? 
James 4, 3. Praise God. Yes, sister. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask means that ye may consume it upon your last. Hey, praise God. Praise God. You ask and you receive not because you ask or miss that you may consume it upon your last. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you know, you I have Jesus. this wonderful example of this. This is a true, a true example, true testimony of this lady in the UK. That she used to, she had a terrible financial problem. Somebody had cheated her of a huge amount of money. Okay? And she had this, uh, this habit of buying the lottery. Lottery. Every month she would, uh, she would buy the UK lottery in the hope that she would get a bumper and it would solve her financial problems. And so she used to pray and pray that she would get the lottery. Until she came to the knowledge of the truth of, of the word of God. That it is wrong to buy lottery tickets. You cannot, you cannot buy your financial, your buy, buy your money, buy your, buy your, buy God. And so she decided to stop buying those lottery tickets. And what happened? Just, just, just a testimony, say about maybe 10 days back. This same lady, when she understood this truth, for years she was buying these lottery tickets. She got a hearing from the tribunal, from the court, just a few days back. To say that she was completely, you know, that person who had, who had cheated her, who had, you know, had taken so much of money for her, from her. She was some completely going to get all that was taken. Restored. Wow. Can you imagine? It's just, that was the word. So she was praying, but at the same time, she was operating in pride. The pride in her was not allowing her to depend on God as her source, but she wanted to depend on the lottery as her source. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. So when she understood the truth of the word, she said, no, God is my source now. I do not have to depend on lottery. I'm going to depend on God. I'm going to sow wherever I can. Give wherever I can. And God mm. will never be out down in generosity. When you abide by his laws, you are going to see the power flow in your life. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Thank Praise you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, I have another example which can give you about health. Since we were all talking about symptoms a while ago, <laughs> health and long life. Yeah? So all of us want to live a long life. We all want to live a long life. Okay, yes. I want to take you to one recipe for long life. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse number 12. Exodus 20, verse number 12. Is it interesting? <clears throat> Yes, Very sister, yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Very beautiful, sister. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Let, can we read that? Mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you want to live a long life. God give you a long life. Honor your father and mother. How many of us, we have dumped our parents. I'm not saying on this platform, but I know this is going to be on YouTube later. Many of us have dumped our parents in some old aged home for somebody else to care about them. And we do not even look after them. We do not even call them or we do not even, you know, bother about them. And we want to live a long life. It's the Bible is so clear. It's so beautiful. It tells us, you know, there is, there is a solution for everything. You want to live a long life. Do it God's way. Humble yourself to this word. Humble yourself. Honor your father and mother that you may live a long life. Another verse. Go to Psalm 34, verse 12 to 14. Psalm 34, verse 12 to 14. Yeah. What man is he had desired life and love it many days that he may be good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Praise God. Praise God. So it's so clear. What man is he that desires life and loves many days? All of us want life. We want abundant life. We want to live. 
abundantly. We love, want to live many days, a long, prosperous, healthy, wealthy whole life that we may see good. So what do we need to do? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil, do good, seek peace and pursue it. A person who desires long life must keep their tongue from evil and speaking guile. What is guile? Guile is deceit. Guile is, you know, uh, insincere words. That means we are speaking something and we are doing something else. Yes. We are not speaking what we mean and we are not meaning what we say. We are people of fake duplicity. Praise That's God. A person, person who is not of integrity, that is guile, that is deceit. We are deceiving our own selves. And the word of God says, if you want to live a long life, keep yourselves, keep your tongue from evil and from speaking guile. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So Thank there you. is a spiritual side to long life. Sometimes we say, oh, you know, I want to live a long life. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to not go, not eat red meats. I'm going to go for long exercises, long walks every day and follow all the health regimes. And yet inside of me, I'm full of bitterness, resentment. I'm speaking blasphemy. I'm speaking guile out of my mouth, deceit out of my mouth. Do you think I'm going to live a long life? No matter yeah. how much health regime I'm following. I'm not going to live a long life if I'm going to speak guile, if I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak evil things out of my mouth. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Remember Proverbs 18, 21. Yes. But sometimes we do not follow God's precepts. We do not want to humble ourselves to God's word. And yet we say, pray and pray and say, Lord, I want to live a long life. I'm going to do everything my way. I'm going to do, you know, what the world says. Follow, eat healthy, eat cooks. I'm not saying don't eat healthy, okay? Don't get me wrong. <laughs> you need to take <laughs> care of your body because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's why I told you I go for walk every day. But, <laughs> but at the same time, it's very important that we keep our spiritual health higher, on a higher level than just following health regimes. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Thank, Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, many times people are living with sickness, they are living with pain, and, and they say they are not getting a breakthrough. Why? I'm not saying it's always the case, but very often it is the pride that frustrates the grace of God. Can you imagine there is this good, awesome God, a God filled with love for us, who has done everything for us through his son, Jesus Christ. He has provided everything for us by grace through the finished works of Jesus. He wants us to live a healthy, wealthy, prosperous life. But we limit ourselves to receiving from God when we choose to operate in pride and refuse to humble ourselves. So we need to humble ourselves through the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I have another two examples. So I think we have time. Let me share these two examples because That's I'm sure right. they are going to bless many of you. Okay? Or, okay. The other example, another example is, uh, I want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 16. Let's, let's read that and let's learn from those verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 14 to 16. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what on God hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believed with an infidel? 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So there are two parts to, this, to these verses. The first thing I would like to share is from 14. It says, be not unequally yoked, together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness 
with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness and 15 and what concord has Christ with Belial or what part has he that believers believeth with an infidel now the word of God here it's not my word it's this is the word of God it says not to be unequally yoked with an unbeliever what does it mean that means you don't have a relationship with a person who is unbeliever, who is an unbeliever. What does it mean? That means you don't get tied. You don't get tied or unequally yoked. Yoked means tied to a person who is not of the faith. Now, many of you on this platform may be already married to an unbeliever. I'm not telling you you leave your partner and go and find somebody yes, else. Yeah. I'm not advocating yes. that. But what yes, I'm trying to say is that for those who are not married, or maybe you have, you have children who are not yet not yet made that, we can advise them not to get unequally yoked with a believer. If we are truly believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to humble ourselves with this word. Humble ourselves with the word. And even if they're already yoked to the unbeliever, they are praying for that unbelieving partner to also come to Christ. You know, many people have not understood this word. And therefore, when they are choosing a life partner, they don't choose a life partner who's godly. Instead, they go by outward appearances. They go yeah. by, you know, looks. They go by, you know, goosebumps. And then what happens? They end up broken frustrated, bruised, when all those looks and all that glamour has faded away, they end up frustrated. This is lust, my dear brothers and sisters. This is not, this is not godly. This is prideful. The, the actual way, the right way of choosing a partner is to choosing somebody who's godly. And that is what this verse says. Do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Then I want to go Thank to verse you, number 16. It says, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk with them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. So very clear. The Lord is making it, saying to us, no agreement should be held with idols because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and you, at the same time, cannot have any other idol in your life. Our God is a jealous God. He wants us to worship him and him alone. Now, an mm -hmm. idol is not only a God of unbelievers. That those are not only idols. Idols can be anything in our life that has taken precedence over God. It may be our mobile phone. It may be, uh, it may be our spouse. It may be our children. It may be anything in our life that has taken precedence over God and his word. An idol. We do not humble ourselves to this word that you cannot make any idol because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Then it is possible that you are flowing, you are, you are limiting the flow of grace in your life. God wants to pour that grace, but you have not allowed that full flow of that grace because you're going and you're going and putting idols in your life. You're not operating in humility in this area. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God. I hope you have got me, my dear brothers and sisters. If there's anything you want to ask at this stage, you can still ask me. I'm here to take questions. No problem. Praise God. It was such a beautiful... You know, it's such a practical thing in our life. Even though we are in the word, sometimes we fail to remind ourselves, you know, and let the Holy Spirit convict us because it's about me. I don't care what others say, but this is what you did to me. Why should I forgive you? Why should I bow down to you? Why, 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 you know? But when it comes to the word, yes, he wants you to be a dead dog, a doormat. You know, and, and that's what Jesus was about. If you read the word, it's just everything. How did he do that? Sometimes I ask, you know, how did he do that? He could run away from everything because he was a God. He was the most high God, but he didn't. And that is why, because Jesus, see, Jesus left his heavenly glory above. He could have had everything. Everything, exactly. He was God yes. himself. The word was God and God was the word. 
he was God personified. Yet he left his heavenly glory above. He came onto the earth. He took the humble form of a slave. He humbled himself. And became a substitute for us. And what happened? God. Because he humbled himself, God exalted him. God exalted him and made him higher than anybody. Today, Jesus at the right hand of the Father, interceding Amen. for us. God exalted yes. him. Yes. When we yes. humble ourselves, God is going to exalt us. And remember, Jesus gave that beautiful parable about the wedding feast and people being invited to that wedding feast. And there were so many who came there. And then he said, do not take the front seats because if somebody more important was invited, then they would have to tell you to go and move to the back. Yes. Instead, take the back seats so that if there is le less space or less there's space in front, your guest, your, uh, I will, the, the, the person who's invited, what is that? The, the, the person guest. who's given the wedding wedding invite will tell yeah. the guests to come and move in front. So those who are humble will be exalted and those who are exalted will be humble. Amen. The same is oh, the case yeah. of the Pharisee and the tax collector when they went mm. to pray. Again, the Pharisee was all about I. I have given alms. I am not like that uh, tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes. All these things. It was all about I. So Jesus said he would be brought low. Whereas the tax collector wouldn't even look up. He was, you know, he was so humble in himself. And that's when Jesus said the humble will be exalted and the exalted will be humble. A beautiful model of humility is Jesus himself and how much we can learn from Jesus. Saint Paul is another example of humility. Saint Paul, you know, when he encountered Jesus, he always said, it is nothing of me. It is mm. all of him inside of me. He has Amen. written two-thirds of the New Testament. Praise God. And Praise yet this man, he always gave glory in everything to God. This brings me to another, my last example, our service, our service in the church. You know, many times in the body of Christ, this I factor, this pride factor is seeping in very, mm. very subtly because the, the enemy is, you know, so subtle. He does not come with horns and, you know, he's, he just creeps in like that snake. So subtly yeah. it's creeping in the body of Christ. And if you see today, many of these, you know, big preachers and all, they are so flamboyant. They own so many cars and, you know, they have luxury, luxurious lifestyle. You know, we need to learn from Jesus, meek and humble of heart. Humble, God in yes. our first table. God is not, God, God is telling us, you know, you need to humble. See, it's not, not that we have to live in a hut or something, not like that. But it's where our heart is. Our, is our heart on the riches? See, money by itself is not wrong. Don't get me wrong, my dear sisters, brothers. Yes. Money is not wrong. We need money. Money is, is the currency of this world where we live in. But we should not make money our God. Money should not have us. Okay, so greed. that money doesn't make our idol, the greed, the pride, the lust of the world, what I need to gather and, you know, fill my bonds. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So as I was saying, this, uh, this element of pride also has unconsciously seeped in into the church. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So many times we are not, you're not, we are not willing to, you know, die to ourselves in our service. We want that I element. We want that pride. You know, sometimes even when somebody is, you know, uh, somebody is, you know, we have prayed over somebody or somebody has come out of some problem. It's very quick for them. I was the counselor. I was the one mm. who reached out to them. I knew, yes. I was the blacksmith or whatever. And then they want you to put your name in their testimony. So it doesn't happen like that. In yes. Way. Praise God. Yes. The yes. Yes. Of yes. God works on humility, on humility mm. and love. Even if my name is not said anyway, I don't care because yeah. it's all about him. It's not about me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we'll just go once again back to this verse, this principal verse, James chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, you know. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, but even for that matter, even ask Melanie, from where to where he has brought us, he, the word has brought us, Thank from you, where to where we are led. And, you know, <laughs> according to J, uh, John 15, 3, we are cleansed and being cleansed 
Every day we speak that word. The yes. word cleanses us. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Very true. It's the word that is cleansing us. See, we are all on a journey. Now, just because I'm giving this talk, it doesn't mean that I'm very perfect in my life. Yes. The Lord is showing us in different areas of our life how we need to humble ourselves, how we need okay. to submit to his word, how we need to operate in humility and not in pride, to kill the I factor, to crucify ourselves, to die to ourselves every day of our life. Because it's not about us, it's about him. Mm. Going there, mm. James chapter 4, Enoch, are you there? James chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, we'll read verse number 8. Yeah, mm -hmm. can we read verse number 8, sister? Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Praise God. And then let's read verse number 10. And humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Praise God. So verse 8 says, draw nigh to God. That means draw near to God. Cleanse your hands. You sinners, purify your hearts. You double-minded. That means we cannot operate in double-minded. We can't say, you know, this word of God, maybe it will work. But, you know, it may not work in this case. Or we can, you know, sometimes we, we doubt. We doubt the word. That is again yes. operating in pride. Sometimes we say, you know, that uh, maybe, you know, one day I will operate according to, you know, what the word says. But in this area of my life, I leave me on my own. I want to do it my way. Okay. So that's again operating in pride. We are, we are what, I would, what I would use the word, we are choosy or we are selective. Selective, what, yes. What things that we want to incorporate. In you know, there are so many Christians, in fact, they are not, they are not vocal against uh, abortion or they are not vocal against uh, killing babies in the womb. They, they, they justify, they say it's okay. Many people, many Christians are, you know, they, they are actually fighting for the for the bills to be passed in the Congress on all these things. So it is, you know, how selective or how how much you are really totally submissive to that word. Submissive means like, you know, it, it's a, like a slave to a master relationship. It's when the slave is obedient to the master. In the same way, the word of God is our master and we need to be obedient to that master. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. So when we humble ourselves, James 4.10, when we humble ourselves, we draw near to God. Because when we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, he shall lift you up. You do not have to lift yourself up. He will lift you up. By shifting my focus from God, from myself to God, by making myself a living sacrifice, I'm going to, the, the, the focus will shift from me to God and God is going to lift me. Self-sacrifice requires humility. We have to shift our focus from self and remember what Paul wrote in Galatians 2.20. What it says, as believers, we are crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Can we go there? Galatians 2.20. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. So our lives are no longer our own. I am crucified. The I in me is crucified. It is not my life that I'm living, but I'm living his life. I live in the flesh by the faith of the son of God. If God believes something, if the faith of God inside of me has to believe that thing, say God has healed me already. If God believes that, uh, if God has said that he has already healed me, I need to believe that word, submit myself to that word, which says that God has healed me. Because I have the faith 
of the Son of God. If God believes I can heal the sick, I can forgive others, I, I can love my enemies, I need to humble myself and believe it. Do I believe it? When I believe it's not me, but it is the Lord inside of me. It is the Holy Spirit inside of me that helps me to do his will. You know, there's, I cannot do it on my own. And Never. God, remember, God cannot make you humble. You need the help of the Holy Spirit to make yourself humble. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So the Holy Spirit will help you to submit to God's word. Make God's word of, uh, the ultimate in your life. Be obedient. Crucify the eye. Overcome the pride and walk in the ways of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You know, Jesus, he was, though he was in the flesh, he felt everything that we would ever go through. He knows that we are going to go through all these difficulties in our life. And that is why throughout scripture, he has shown us with examples how we need to operate in humility. As I told you, the parable of the wedding wedding feast, the, then the, about the Pharisee and the tax collector. He showed, that's why he was always so, you know, vociferous. He was so forceful against those Pharisees and scribes because he knew that they were, you know, he called them whitewashed tombs. They were one person on the inside and they were others on the outside. They put heavy loads on people's back, but they were not willing to carry the loads themselves. They were operating in prayer. And Jesus understood humility so beautifully. You know, that's why, you know, when, um, when Peter told Jesus that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus applauded him because that surely that came from the Holy Spirit, right? But a few moments later, when Jesus told Peter that he was going to die, Peter said, no, 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 Lord, that must not happen to you. Peter, you know, was, was scared to put the Lord through that hall. Mm -hmm. What? Yes. You know, why did it happen? Because it was pride. Mm, and good. Jesus had to deal with that pride quickly. Because he did not want to, you know, that pride to interfere with God's plan for, for his life. And so he had to tell Peter, get behind me, Satan. He called that pride inside of Peter, Satan. It was not Peter who, who was calling Satan. He was calling that pride inside of Peter, Satan. And said, get behind me, Satan. Jesus had to deny himself. He had to deny all that, you know, that physical torture that he was going through. Humble himself so that yes. he could fulfill God's plan in his life. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. So prideful people will find it very difficult to have intimacy with God. You know, I the Lord taught me this also because, you know, initially when I first started laying my hands, praying over people, I used to, you know, be, I used to say, will it work? Will it not work? Will I look like a fool? And then, you know, that was again pride because it was pointing to me. It's the, it mm. was like, you know, I need to do it so that, you know, I don't look like a fool in front of everyone. But the day I said, Lord, it's not me. It's you inside of me. It is the Holy Spirit inside of me. I'm going to depend totally on the Holy Spirit. I don't care what is going to happen. But I know, and I know that it is not my hands. It is you. It's not my mouth. It is you speaking for me. And the day I took that approach, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, everything changed in my life. I began to see glory after glory. Even in the preaching, in, in, in sharing the word, many a times I used to prepare beautifully. And, but now when I let the Holy Spirit lead me, I do not know from where to where I jump because Amen. it's, not, it's Amen. not me. It's the Holy Spirit who's moving me. So when you Amen. die to yourself, you, you don't say, you know, Lord, I wanted this perfectly. And then, you know, it has to be in this particular order. Only then I'll be happy. Then I'll be satisfied. No. It's the leading of the Holy Spirit that helps you in everything that you do. So when we humble ourselves to the will of God, when we humble ourselves to God and his word, he can take over. His grace can flow more and more. We can appropriate more and more of that grace. Grace is there, but the flowing of that grace through us will be more as we submit ourselves, as we humble, himself, humble ourselves, overcome that pride and humble ourselves and operate according to his will. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So that's what I wanted to share, my dear sisters. I think, Praise um, Jesus. I Let's see if they have any questions. Question. Yes, yes, yes. We have another 10 minutes. We can take some questions. Yeah. Any questions, my dear sisters? Anyone wants to ask anything? anything? Any doubt? Suppose, anything sister, uh, 
Hello. Yes. Yes, yes sister. Uh, yes, sister. I also I liked most some most of the friends they were calling sick um, and today also I had the program that we have to go and have a light program to pray for the sick. But now I am so sick for myself, so I have to be at home. And what to do now? I I'm, was on this habit of eating tobacco and betel nut. So like, can I lay hand on the sick people to pray? Praise God, Sister Alfie. See, what you have done in the past, whether you were eating betel nut, you are not eating betel nut tobacco right now, right? Uh, right now I'm not eating, but every I used to eat. You used to, so that's over. That past is finished. The day you accepted Jesus, God doesn't look at your past to give us. A, that's what I said. He's not mm -hmm. looking at you. He has made every one of us uh, usable for your for the kingdom of God. So the enemy is going to beat you up and say, mm -hmm. "Oh no, you used to eat tobacco once upon a yeah. time. Now you cannot lay hands." No, no, no. You can mm -hmm. still go and lay hands. It's Jesus inside of you. The Holy Spirit is doing the job. It's not you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why I said the enemy's crafty is a deceiver and we need to know the word of God. We need to humble ourselves, operate in humility, resist that pride inside of us and God is going to show up amazingly in our life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Don't yes. let the question. Alpha, you know who you are in Christ. Don't let the enemy tell you who you are. Okay. Sister. You are a princess. Your God is the most high God. He's your creator. Okay. Sister. Praise God. Praise God. Who, uh, uh, anyone else? Shanta, over to you, Baba. Didn't hear your voice all the Praise time. Praise God. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, thank you, sister, for this teaching. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, we need to, yes, we need to die ourselves, right? We don't have to say, I. We need to depend on god we uh, we need to be a god dependent not in just one area but every area of our life because he he doesn't say that no in this area yes i will do for you but in other area what you what you have to do you do no he doesn't say he doesn't want in some areas he always want us complete we, we need to be dependent on every area of our life. Praise God. So Praise yes, God. we need to be God dependent. Then only he can work because when we are not agree with him, how can he work for us, right? He always ready to work for us. He always ready to help. But we need to be submit to him and fully submit to him. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, can I do the Thanksgiving prayer, sister? Let's see if Ravina wants to do it. Ravina, you want to do? You want to say the Thanksgiving prayer? Are you there? The sister is not there, sister. I think so, sister. She's Ravina not is not there. Okay, okay. You go ahead. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of Amen. the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for today's teaching that you did through Sister Melanie. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for always coming and teaching us, Lord. Yes, Holy Spirit, you are always ready to help us. You are always ready to help us in every area of our life, Lord. And yes, you are guiding us. You are teaching us in every area of our life. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Because you are my teacher. You are the teacher. You are our best friend, our comforter, our everything, Lord. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for teaching us guiding us in every area of our life, teaching us the truth and giving us the revelation, Lord. We don't have to think about ourselves, but we need to submit what we had. We need to submit to you, Lord, 
and we have to agree with your word yes lord we agree with you lord because we have seen your love for us lord we have seen your unconditional love above father how much you have loved us lord and it is your love lord that who brought to you lord thank you so much lord thank you so much lord jesus thank you holy spirit thank you abba father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit and now we thank you lord jesus that you are living inside of us our old nature has been crucified and now we are a new creation we are a new person we are brand new person thank you so much lord jesus now now who we are it is all about you lord jesus because all that we had you took everything lord and it is all nailed on the cross thank you so much lord jesus thank you abba father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you so much lord holy spirit yes we go with you lord holy spirit and we go and share that word what you have taught us lord and share what you what we have learned from you holy spirit thank you so much holy spirit and bringing those soul to the kingdom of heaven because we we don't think ourselves lord we don't think about ourselves but first we give the first priority the first place the word of god lord and yes we give the first, the priority the first priority to you and yes lord holy spirit you are working through us lord thank you so much holy spirit thank you jesus yes lord we know it is your will and you don't want that anyone anyone would perish lord but all comes to you every soul should be saved it is your will lord and yes lord we know this and yes holy spirit we go with you and bring souls to the kingdom of heaven thank you so much holy spirit thank you jesus thank you abba father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen 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 amen, amen. 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 amen.